Hey guys, Sam here. Today I'm going to be going through a really simple Golang Go routine concurrency use case that will hopefully help you guys that are new to Go and looking to understand some real use cases of Go routines in your Go code. This, first of all, is an endpoint in an application in that code post application which I've done a series about uh, on the channel. Um, and I needed to essentially increment a view count on a post when someone uh, goes to a post, right? But obviously, what I don't want to have to do as from a back-end perspective is when a user goes to a post I don't want to have to you know get the post firstly which is what this is doing here go and get the post get all the comments I mean at the moment this is just like thrown in to get the comments but eventually this would join together anyway so this this could be sped up anyway but um, for now I'm getting the post and then I go and get all the comments so I've got two database queries here which I will join to one eventually ignore that for now um, so that's a fairly quote unquote like expensive slowish operation right and then obviously the next thing I have to do is then go and in increment the view count for this post but what I don't want to have to do from a user's perspective on the front end is I don't want to have to load the post load the comments and then load the um, then increment the view count and return that to a user right because that means they've then got to wait for something which they don't care about they don't care about I want to increment a view count so why would they want to wait you know for that to happen right so this is where some really basic go concurrency comes into play right so firstly um just to go over what we got here i have a tasks i have a task weight group um on the service right so this is an, a service method or well, technically it's just attached to an api method on this case but so that picture this is like your service or like your api etc right this embeds a weight group which if you know about weight groups in go is you can basically you can increment a counter of tasks and then what you can then you know tell go that a task is finished and then further down in your code you'd also have a wait to wait for all your tasks to finish right so what i have going on here is i spin up a task to say right i've got a new task to add i tell go when it's done using the defer function very simple obviously spinning up the go routine just before that and then I increment the view count in this routine, right? So what this does is the API endpoint, so the request itself isn't waiting for the task to finish, but the main thread, so the like in main.go where I actually spin up the service. So if I jump to uh, if I jump to main.go, uh, should be in here. I have this long task wait group, right? And this is just passed into the API, and then I after I start the server, I wait for all of the long tasks to finish before then a server can can actually be cancelled, right? Um, and I can probably handle that a little bit nicer to make sure it's safely everything finishes safely, right? Um, with a better timeout on the context, etc. But so if we go over this again now, so we know that the service has this long task uh, variable here, which is passed into the API. So every long task will finish before an API can shut down but a long task does not have to finish before a request right so spin up a go routine add a task and then you go and update the view count so to break down how this will basically work a user will request it on this thread here what will happen is it, the code will go and get the post go and get the comments and then this routine here will be spun up so it'll be on a different like thread over here technically not actually threads and go but we all know, we all know that um, so another routine over here. This routine doesn't care if this one finishes, it's just been spun up. So this one can now go ahead and increment the view count and do whatever else it needs to do. But this one can then go ahead and, and actually return the post to the user, right? And it doesn't have to wait for the view count to be incremented. Um, but obviously we do want to make sure this is finished before a service is stopped, etc. And that is why we have a wait group here, just to make sure it safely finishes. Um, and that brings me on to context. So as you probably know, as a Go developer and Go, you pass in a context everywhere, right? A request has a context, um, long-lived operations should have a context passed into it. Uh, so for example, this request has a context, right? So this is the context of this request. When this request finishes and a response is turned to a user, the context is like cancelled, um, which we don't want to pass in the request context to any operations in our other routine, right? We just want to spin up a new context because we know that this this um, operation should not wait for the request to finish, right? It, it, and it shouldn't cancel if it does finish. So what we do simply is create a new context and pass that into our method. That way it can go ahead, finish its operations without worrying about the request context finishing. Um, 
But yeah, I just wanted to make a really quick video. It's a short one, but it's just a really powerful way of spinning up, of doing a, an operation on an API method, especially if you're building an app that you want to just get out there quick and you don't want to worry too much about performance because you may not have the users yet to really care about performance because that's the main thing, right? You don't really need to care about performance until you actually have users. Um, but just as like a really quick thing, you can throw in endpoints, spin up a routine and do background tasks on it. Like for example, another really good use case of this might be a user might sign up and it will hit your sign up endpoint. You don't want to have to wait for the endpoint to respond to send that email to him. You can straight away just spin up another routine and then go ahead and, um, you know, notify that user with an email in another routine. It doesn't have to finish its request, etc. You get the idea. Um, hopefully this video made some sense and it helps you with your Golang endpoints and hopefully this also shows you a realistic approach to Go concurrency and some actually useful use cases and where you can use Go routines in your Go code. Thanks for watching. See you later on.